Hello and welcome. This is the best in paranormal talk radio. Beyond the Darkness is on the air. I'm your host, Dave Schrader, along with me, the lovely and talented Mr. Tim Dennis. Good evening, Tim. Oh, go on. Listen, tonight's show is all about you, brother. Me? I know you are a conspiracy theory guy. Oh, yeah. You love conspiracy theories. I love a good conspiracy You theory. love conspiracy theories like I love McRib sandwiches, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, never want to pass one up. No. So we're going to talk with a good friend of ours, Jimmy Church. He's the host of Fade to Black. He's the host of a new show that will be airing on History Channel a little bit later on in this fall based on his show. And he's also one of the fill-in hosts and has been for a couple of years now on Coast to Coast AM with me. And uh, by the way, I'll be hosting Coast to Coast AM this Saturday night, midnight till 4 a.m. Central. And uh, we're going to be talking about... Uh, um, Kind of an interesting conspiracy in itself, the the Lindbergh baby kidnapping, Tim. Really? Yeah. There's you, news about the Lindbergh baby? <laughs> you'd think all these years later, what there, what could there possibly be? But right. there's actually a different angle and stuff. Huh. I never knew. I, you know, I, I'm not a big history guy. I like some points of history. I'm mm-hmm. not. I just knew that there was this American hero, right? This legend, Charles Lindbergh. Right. And at the height of kind of his popularity, this his child was kidnapped and, and consequently murdered, either by accident or, uh, you know, uh, on purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I, I knew about that story enough, and I've seen little clips of that through history, but that's about all I knew. I didn't realize there was a different side to Charles Lindbergh. He was a Nazi sympathizer, allegedly. Mm-hmm. Um, not a real nice guy. And there is um, a pretty good case that says he may have known more and been involved in the kidnapping and uh, accidental murder of his own son. Huh. As hard as that is to believe, we're going to talk um, with J.T. Townsend this Saturday about that and uh, find out more. So make sure you check out coasttocoastam.com forward slash stations to find stations and times in your area. Or you can always support us by listening to it right here from the home station of Beyond the Darkness, knsiradio.com. That's knsiradio.com. This is our St. Cloud, Minnesota uh, station for Coast to Coast AM, and they stream it live, so you can listen to the show right from their website. I uh, want to thank our uh, sponsors for the evening, Audible, an Amazon company. If uh, you want to go check it out, they've got 180,000 titles available, and uh, everything from sci-fi to get-rich-quick schemes, Tim, to uh, <laughs> love stories, your favorites, and more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and right now, they've got a great program going on. If you want to get a free downloaded book and a free 30-day trial of Audible, go to audibletrial.com forward slash darkness. That's audibletrial.com forward slash darkness to take advantage of that. And getbarkbox.com is part of our program, too, Tim. You can go to Get BarkBox.com forward slash darkness and get an extra month added on free to your subscription so you can get the newest in snacks and fun toys for your furry friends. Very cool. So that's what's going on. But let's uh, let's get into tonight's show. Uh, as I said, uh, Jimmy Church is joining us. He's the host of Fade to Black and the, uh, one of the hosts on Coast to Coast AM. And Tim, I wanted to dip into conspiracy theories, but on a different level. And Jimmy, I know, likes conspiracies and, and really gets into this as well. So I thought we'd have a, kind of a cool three-way conversation tonight. Uh, as we talk about the conspiracy of theories, what drives people to look for nefarious schemes behind tragic events? And uh, I want to talk about some of the more outlandish, dumb, and, and some of the more amazing conspiracies out there. Jimmy Church, welcome to Beyond the Darkness. Dave and Tim. Yes. How are you, the sir? The morning drive. He's the Barry so, White of uh, I, of I, of the conspiracy I, world here, Tim. I know. I wanted to jump in and say I thought I was hosting Coast this Saturday, and my guest was Barack Obama. Yeah, that's not uh, happening. Do I need to call Barack and 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 reschedule? Yeah, tell him Schrader's taking up the time. It's Schrader, very it's important it's show. Baseball. Very important right. show. Yeah. Yeah. You can, right. get, get Barack in October. Let us let's hear yeah. what's going on with his thoughts at that point. Um, so, conspiracies. Ahead, How long? I'm yeah. curious, Jimmy, with your interest in, in this uh, conspiracies, why do you think people are so fascinated by the topic of, of conspiracy theories? Well, uh, we have two different we have two different eras of the conspiracy. Um, we have the old version, which, believe it or not, is modern history, like beyond two years ago and and backwards. We have that conspiracy side of things. Today, conspiracy is the new normal. And through the last, if if you look at what has happened in the last couple of years, not only through the last election, 
but WikiLeaks and and Snowden and uh, the different fake news things that went on around the world, it caused everybody, aside from us, you know, in our little circle where we've been screaming about conspiracies and different things and agendas for such a long time, that today conspiracy is the new normal. With everything that has gone down, it, it has allowed everybody to go, back up a step and go, you know what, these these crazies have been right. <laughs> there is a deep state. There is an agenda. We are being fade, fake, fake news. We we don't know what's real and what is not. And that's what's interesting here. It, it's no longer this fringe topic, right? It, it, conspiracy is, is truly the new normal. I'll give you another example. Sure. When it comes to conspiracy mm -hmm. and the definition of conspiracy, it was always a criminal act. Two or more people conspiring to commit a crime. Okay? Now, today, pop culture has driven a definition of conspiracy, which is just anything that can't be true, but it actually is. And, and that's what's interesting. So, conspiracy is indeed the new normal. Do you think it's the new normal because of the advent of, of the popularity of the internet and how easy it is to access a lot of fake data and information and people being gullible and buying into so much of what they find online. Sure. And that's a big part of it because it's instantaneous now. And this is something that is obvious to us today uh, that you can go and investigate on the internet, but, uh, and, and double check and vet sources. You couldn't do that, uh, in years past when, your information came from Time Magazine once mm -hmm. a week in the mailbox, right? Right. And to go and investigate something, you had to go to the library, or you had to do so, you know you had to do something to investigate it. We had three or four major network news things uh, that would come on, and your information was just fed from a few different sources. And and I know that today saying something so general is obvious, but that was the life that we had. There was, you know, that's just the way that it was. Today, you can go and and check into anything and and have millions of of different sources at your access, and and people are used to that now. Let, let me ask you about this, uh, Jimmy. I'm, I'm wondering where you stand on this. We did an, an interesting show. You're familiar with Len Caston, right? Of course. Okay, uh, we had Len Caston on our show once. And he had done a talk on Planet Serpo and this kind of foreign exchange student program we had going. Where I think it was, right. what was it, 13 astronauts, Tim, that were being sent to Serpo? Yeah, and, 13 and then what, two came back? Or right, it, something yeah. like that. But anyway, there was this, you know, an interesting, and we always explore all of these topics. We give respect to our guests. We want to hear their story. Whether we believe them or not, as George says on, on Coast to Coast, isn't important. It's giving the people the forum to chat. What I right. found fascinating about Len, he was very well spoken and an interesting guest, but when pressed, um, his, his evidence kind of collapsed around him. Uh, right. When we talked to him about this Planet Serpo program and I asked him, well, how do you know that this is real? He admitted that he had found a leaked document from I think it was the CIA and that that stated this information. And I, I asked him, I said, well, is there a, a file number that we can actually look at and through the Freedom of Information Act see that this this file would fit in between, you know, this file and that file and that this would be a legitimate source? And um he, he kind of laughed. He goes, well, I don't have time to, to background search that and, and see right. if it's real. I found it online. Why would somebody put something online that wasn't true? And that was Bingo. the ba basics of what his his story was to us. And I'm, I'm, again, kind of paraphrasing. But I looked at that and I thought, wow, here's a guy who a lot of people are fascinated by and almost has his own allegiance. This this group of disciples that follow him and his beliefs. And it's hinging on. A document he found online and believes why would people lie and put something irresponsible online? And that that's the danger. Right. That's the danger. That's the danger. And it, oh man, it, it not only with something like Serpo, right? And the reason I just went, oh man, you know, because <laughs> it it it's everything. Mm -hmm. Right. It's and Serpo is is a, uh, a micro version of exactly what is going on out there. If if one little thing, a lot of the fake news and disinformation that is out there, fake news is not necessarily disinformation, but it's certainly there's a nexus there where they blend over. And 
all of it has a kernel of truth to it, right? And, and the rest of it may not be true, but it's that one little thing. If you look at court, uh, court, our judicial system, and you sit up on, uh, you're a witness, and you lie, what, you, 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 you give 99 truths, you, you know, but one lie makes the 99 truths untrue now. Right. And so it, they, it goes uh, across the board here where you have uh, uh, one little piece of information that may be true, but the rest of it is not. And now we've got a problem here. And and, and with Serpo. OK, I'll, I'll focus on Serpo just a little bit and then we'll move on. Serpo, when it took off, um, I, I got wrapped up in the middle of it. Uh, I did the the uh, signing on to the Internet every single day to see if there was a Project Serbo update. The information <laughs> was very, very complex. It was coming from all of these different uh, sources and the Birdmen. And and uh, it seemed like it was too um, it was too layered. It was too complex to be a hoax. That was the confusing thing. There was mm-hmm. too many people involved. And so with with all of these sources of information coming in, uh, it seemed to almost everybody that it was it was a secret organization that was disclosing these facts about this secret space program and this exchange program going on with Serpo. And that it was finally, you know, coming to surface here. Then Serpo suddenly ended one day. It just ended. The update stopped. The website stopped. And it forced us all to just kind of step back and and wonder if if all of this was true or not. We all want it to be true. We You know, we want confirmation of something, you know, crazy like this that is actually going on. And, and we can put these rumors to bed. Unfortunately, with Serpo... Uh, besides that one um, leaked CIA document, all of the information for for Serpo only came off of that website. There there was nothing else out there. Very Blair Witch. Yes, yes. There was no place to go to to investigate Serpo. You couldn't do it. It it all centrally focused on on that website. And, you know, I I know Len. Um, I've had dinner with Len. I've sat down with him. I've hung out with him. He's a great guy and a genuine guy. But I think that Len um, uh, was part of that original crew back then that read and updated and got into the Serpo, Serpo world. And and he still thinks that it, it has occurred. I, I don't know if it has or not. You know, all I can say is when we talk about the preponderance of the evidence in the Serpo case, all we have is the website. But that that comes into its own question then, right? You just said you can really only find one site where this information is is coming from. So where was Len cast in getting the rest of the information that he was researching to put together onto this site? Right, right. Well, okay, that that's fine. Mm -hmm. But let me take it to the next level. Right. This is what is the disturbing part Mm -hmm. of Serpo. I think that Serpo and that website was was a disinfo site put up by by the government. I really, really do. It was too complex. It was on the earliest stages of uh, the Internet. The Internet was a different place back then. And Project Mockingbird. And so I, I just feel like it was too complex. And I think that there were some writers and some guys in the background that were working for the government that was putting this out there to have fun with the UFO community and to mess with them. That's I, if you really that's that's the issue. And it mm-hmm. worked. You know, it worked that when it when when we talk about fake news today um, and people ask me all the time if uh if, if this could be real. Well, look, there are many examples now of disinformation coming out there. But Project Mockingbird was real. We're talking about thousands of journalists and newspapers and networks and broadcasts that were under the CIA's employ. And it continues to this day. And it is so easy. The government now understands that with the click of a mouse, you can affect the emotions of millions of people. Millions, uh, Dave, with a, a wave, 
right? And if you think about how easy it is now for them to a crank, crank out a website, uh, get some put some sensational uh, information on it, you can attract and affect emotions. I'll give you the best example I can give you, and I know this is a little twisted, but you, Tim, and I are as twisted as it gets. So let's do this. Twitter, Lady Gaga, the Kardashians, pick a celebrity with 5 million followers. 5 million. Think about that for a second. One tweet, one click, and off it goes. And in a matter of seconds, you've twisted 5 million people. You couldn't do that in years past. You just couldn't do that. And that goes around the world in nanoseconds. We couldn't do that with newspapers. You know, for you to, in 1900, Dave, if you wanted to change the world in 1900, what did you have to, what were your choices? You had to go and print up a flyer at, at the printers, right? And the expense of that, the artwork, everything that you had to do to create it, go and print it, hand it out, and hoping it will get traction and people will start to talk about it. It would take months. It would take months to get uh, something happening, whether you were promoting a play or promoting a political agenda. And and more, more than likely, it fizzled out. Today, it's not that kind of party. Hmm. So when, when it comes to the ability to do something like with Project Serpo, pop up a website and get it going. And you can do it instantaneously and affect potentially millions of people at a crack. And it's cheap. It's cheap. You don't have to uh, pay for agents to go overseas and you don't have to do. You know, and, and that when people ask me about the conspiracy of things today, that's the best example I can give you. You just don't know what is real and what is not when you go to a website and who is behind it. Serpo is a perfect example of that. Jimmy, you bring up an interesting point, and I want to kind of flip your CIA press theory on its ear a little bit here you're you're contending that the cia and the press may have worked hand in hand at one time i want to throw the fake news thing in a different direction bear with me here for a second and i want to use twitter as that example our president tweets out quite a bit and and it seems like nonstop, and that his he wants his word to be the last word now bear with me on this the fake news moniker really came from him now it could be establish that or a lot of people would like to establish that the press really is the fourth establishment of democracy in the country that the press is the is one of those establishments that kind of keeps our democracy in check it's supposed to be unbiased or at, at least it used to be that it used to be un- unbiased that it would report the truth that it would keep us honest um and it no longer does that uh, at, at least a couple of decades ago, we started to have liberal bias and conservative bias in the national news. On the local level now, I don't believe that exists. I don't believe even in the state level it exists, but it does exist on the national level, and we've seen it. We've seen it in, in national headlines with the uh, DNC and CNN. We've seen it in, in, other, in other realms. Bear with me here, and here's where the theory comes in that I believe that by throwing out the fake news moniker and by doing that, a president and his cabinet or a president and his establishment can, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, can weaken the press and in that can make themselves the only establishment that puts out news via yes, Twitter. That, yes, you are correct. And and it and it has worked. To a certain degree it has worked. Our for our our, our founding fathers wanted to make sure and it was an ingenious document um, if you think about it being you know 200 250 years old now with what we have today with technology. They didn't have the vision, obviously, of where we would be today, but they wanted to make sure that there was freedom of the press as a check and balance against what was going on in Washington. Mm -hmm. And back then, the press, you think the press is gnarly today. 
Back then, they would print the most salacious uh, articles and and cartoons, and it was it was vicious. They kept Washington in check, and they wanted to make sure that was there. So, how do you flip flop that? How do you flip flop it? Well, that's the, that's my question well, for you because it seems like in order to get ratings, the news really screwed itself. The press screwed itself. It went away from being unbiased to trying to grab ratings by by incorporating bias into its newscast, therefore allowing a government establishment to become its own press. But but the the press has always been biased. It's always been biased, depending on what the publication or what the outlet was. They, they they were always biased in the direction that they wanted to go in. You as a reader or as a listener picked your bias. OK, that that that's gone on forever. You can go back to different examples of every administration, certainly in the 20th century, where the press was completely biased uh, in one direction or the other. And quite frankly, we're manipulating. But. Let's let's uh, let's move forward to, to, to today. OK, how do you how do you flip flop it? Well, this is where uh, by by Trump saying fake news and so did Hillary during the campaign, mm-hmm. too, as well, mm-hmm. by by saying fake news. And I'm the only real source of news to get it from here. Now you've created the question out there for everybody and that is exactly the opposite of what the founding fathers wanted with the freedom of the press. They don't want Washington to be the source. They want the press out there to question the source and to get to the real truth. If we eliminate uh, the question of, of, of the press or what we're being reported to, now we have got 1984. And now you've got the Ministry of Truth. And what the only source is the Ministry of Truth. That is unacceptable. And that's the flip flop that Trump was very successful in doing. And we cannot go down that road no matter what. I don't I I know that I'm uh, considered mainstream and so is Dave. And and we Dave and I, uh, when we are on coast to coast, we are speaking to millions, millions That is a crazy amount of influence out there. So I recognize and I have to pick and choose what I say. And so does Dave. Uh, The success of darkness and the the success of fade to black. It's because people want truth and want knowledge and they come to us. So we we have to be careful about what we say. And. And when I talk about the mainstream media, wh- whether it's CNN or Fox or uh, 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 what's the uh, Microsoft, whatever that is, MSNBC, mm-hmm. that nobody mm-hmm. watches, but BBC, Sky <laughs> News, RT, um, you can go around the world and, and certainly focus right back on Reuters and AP. Um, all of it is out there for one reason and one reason only, to report OK, and if we take that out and we take and we dismiss that all of that is being fake, then the Ministry of Truth wins and Trump wins. Now we are that is a zone, you know, talk about lemmings to the sea, right? You're going to go right up to the edge of the cliff and take a peek into the darkness, no pun intended, that you may not want to see. You don't want to really go there. We need to have the freedom of the press. We need to have those guys out there putting the pressure on and asking the right questions. One of the things that I do enjoy is is watching Sean Spicer um, uh, uh, just get nervous. You know, and if it was the opposite, what Sean Spicer wants, what Trump wants, they don't want anybody in that press room anymore. Right. They actually said that. And how crazy. I mean, that is the the gnarliest thing ever. That's the biggest conspiracy of if that ever went down, which is that that's what they would love. Sean Spicer doesn't want to have uncomfortable questions. Mm-hmm. He doesn't He just wants to present his agenda. And that's the truth. And we're moving on. And we have certainly been shown uh, over the last couple of years going back to Barack. I mean, it's, this isn't a Republican or a Trump administration thing. Right. This right. this is uh, uh, the mass media uh, being fed information thing. And we we need to be able to go in and ask the questions that they don't want. 
that <laughs> that's it. That's it. And if it, if it comes down to um, uh, George Orwell, and if you think about this, when when they were talking about the single point source of information and the ability to go back and change information from the past and co- go and and correct things to fit the agenda that they are moving forward with, that's exa- that's exactly what what Trump is calling for. And we can't do that. We we cannot. As bad as the press may be, or as good as it may be, um, and I'm against most of it. I am. I don't even watch television anymore. I don't. This is what, and I'm going to give some advice to everybody that's listening to this show, is this. Pick and choose. Read the headline. That's what you want to do. Go and re- pick and choose don't watch. Don't watch something that is forced onto you. Pick and choose what you want forced onto you. Read the headline. If it's something that interests you, read further. If you need to investigate it, then you can do that. But emotionally, you don't want to have this visual audio visual thing fed into you and, and potentially pollute your mind. It, the um, the best thing that I have done in the last two years is I stopped reporting on ISIS. I don't do it. I don't do it. I, I turned off uh, satellite and, and cable over at the house. I took the television sets out of our bunker where I'm at now in downtown Burbank. We're underground. Mm-hmm. I took out the TV sets. I took out the live feeds. Why? I don't want to see another ISIS beheading video. I, I don't. It messes with my head. And I don't know if the videos are real or not, but the propaganda and the dogma that is being fed to me is coming from a source that I don't trust anymore. What's the agenda behind it? And I don't even know if they're real. And that goes back to the ministry of truth. You know, what's interesting you know, kind of playing into this aspect. And I'll bring up kind of a new conspiracy here, uh, maybe birthing itself right on beyond the darkness. It, when you talk about this, I'm, I'm kind of reminded of the fact, right, in, in Revelations, people are always looking for these Bible codes and trying to understand what right. fits into what. And and we understand that some of the Bible is written in a code because uh, it was heretical at the time and you had to be careful with what you were trying to translate and, and share because you could be considered um you know, a, a, a traitor, you could be considered scandalous and, and beheaded or, or murdered for it. And many people are looking for an antichrist, right? Uh, a Hillary, uh, uh, a Donald Trump or Barack Obama, whoever it is. Maybe the fact is that that the antichrist is not a person. The antichrist is the advent of the Internet. Because, right, it, it says that when he comes to power, when the antichrist is at power, it can be the world will hear the message all at once. Right. That that it'll yeah. appear everywhere. Where else could we do that? But the Internet and its followers are legion and they are addicted and you can't go anywhere without checking your phone every five seconds to make sure that, you know, uh, Aaron Moran really died or, you know, did this happen? Did that, there's always a, a news headline. You got to check in and see what's going on, checking in with your people. I wonder if if the idea of the Antichrist is not a person. But this concept, this reality that we've created now, that information, disinformation could be fed to us at any time to lead us into whatever we want to believe, much like you were saying with Project Mockingbird, right? And the the, the deal they did on Facebook a few years ago where they would purposely load negative stories and then trend to watch what people's responses were for the day. And if they let brought out a negative stories and, and forced those down people's throats, the responses all day were negative. Whereas if they gave the, the vessel to the positive, they were seeing a totally different response and seeing how they could manipulate the minds and the personalities of individuals that right. That's the antichrist right there. If you think about it, uh, the advantages now, and, and I agree with you, uh, Dave, uh, is this the advantages of what is going on with the Internet, what that what the man has figured out now that could mean Washington. It could mean uh, it could uh, uh, marketing campaigns. Uh, it could it, it could be big money. It could be corporations. But the man has figured out that they can manipulate through social media and Facebook of which now reaches half of the world, right? Half of the world instantaneously. That's Mm -hmm. nuts. And it's sock puppets. 
And when we talk about conspiracies and the Ministry of Truth and manipulating and emotions and being able to steer people certain directions, the, the sock puppet phenomenon, which is real, is something that most people don't understand. And I'm talking about the average person that's on Facebook. And they go and they they're, they look in their thread and something pops up there and it's some crazy comment. It could be a post about dogs and then somebody pops in and says, oh, yeah, well, well Trump kills puppies, right? Or whatever, whatever, right? And it's just out of the blue, just some craziness. And the person in the, that has got that post going responds back, what are you talking about? A- affecting their emotions. And th- suddenly this long thread continues, and it will go on for 24 hours where these responses are instantaneous. And, and people don't realize that a lot of this is AI, artificial intelligence, responding back to keywords and and coming back. And they don't need uh, artificial intelligence doesn't need to take a nap. It doesn't need to eat. It can sit there 24 hours a day responding back to you and, and, and you're tripping out and now you're tired. And every time you sign on, you've got this argument going with somebody that isn't real. Right. And then you have the sock puppet army beyond the uh, artificial intelligence side of this. This is real. This is occurring right now as I'm speaking to you. You have the um, the the military, the army has got a sock puppet division where they have got members of the military with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 different identities set up online and they set up the accounts, put up you know, a, a family photograph and they've established an account and they go and they manipulate whatever they want to manipulate. And this is that's what I'm talking about when we uh, the conspiracy of things in the ministry of truth. This is real and it scares me. And and most people I'm and I mean, I hate to say the ninety nine point nine nine percent quote, but that's really the truth. Most don't have any idea, and they're responding to this stuff, um, and, and it goes on with Reddit or 4chan or uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook it, it's, and, and Twitter. All uh, The majority of this negative post that you see there and the trolling phenomena are not even real accounts. These are not real people. These are people that are literally, literally messing with your emotions. And, and it occurs daily. So is that the Antichrist? <laughs> Think about that for a second. The ability to rise up and do that and control people is is a scary, scary thought. My mission, my mission here, and it's been that from the very beginning on, on fade to black and, and coast to coast. Yes, I deal with UFOs and ghosts and, and Egypt and, and, and lost history and Gobekli Tepe. I, I deal with all of those things and I'm fascinated with them. But the other thing that I want everybody to understand is everything that you read, everything out there, everything that you see, question. Question everything. Question it. Don't jump on it. I've had so many people. I'm not going to say anything about the, this pedophilia stuff and this other stuff that's out there. But that's the, if you want to affect it's, uh, somebody's emotions, go in that direction. And I would have people requesting that I bring up these subjects on Fade to Black or Coast to Coast live on the air. I'm getting tweets. You need to talk about this. You need to. And, and it turned out that the majority of these different subjects that they're bringing up uh, were not true. And it was, you know, generated, uh, you know, by fake news, but people were reacting to it instantaneously. So could it be just that? Could it be the ancient text warning us of the future? And did they know about what is going on? Certainly, we need to make people aware of that. If there's a mission that we have, it's just question everything. That's all you got to do. Vet the source a couple of times. And if it's something that you feel is is real, then go and talk about it at work. Talk about it with your friends and family. But until that point, don't react to it emotionally because it's probably somebody messing with you. 
Jimmy Church, our guest this evening. You can check out his website, jimmychurchradio.com. He's also the host of Coast to Coast AM. You can check in with him as he fills in for George Norrie as well. We'll continue with more conspiracy theories and the theories behind conspiracies with Jimmy as we continue. Uh, what are his thoughts on things like JFK, chemtrails, uh, the Phoenix Lights, 9-11, moon visits? We'll talk about all that and more as the show progresses. Now, when we come back, we'll search for more of the real truth with Jimmy Church church as we look at conspiracy theories here on beyond the darkness beyond the darkness Hey, welcome back. This is Beyond the Darkness. Tonight, we're taking a look at conspiracy theories with Jimmy Church from Fade to Black and from Coast to Coast AM. You can find more information on Jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com and uh, keep up to date with him and his shows. Jimmy, we're talking about conspiracy theories. I want to talk about some of the more outlandish, dumb, and and kind of just all-out amazing conspiracies. Um, You know, automatically, when you speak conspiracy theories, people automatically go to the JFK assassination. They talk about the moon visits with NASA, 9-11, as... as you know, the most recognizable and probably some of the biggest, darkest conspiracies out there. I, let's start off with kind of some of the more outlandish and dumb conspiracies that you've heard over the years that just amaze and amuse you. That amaze and amuse me. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's uh, JFK. I, I'll, I'll just say this really quick about JFK. And we can move on. There's been so much research there. The, the trippy part about JFK is that he had probably 20 or 30 different reasons to be assassinated. That's that's the crazy part. Right? So I I don't I, I just know that what we have been told hasn't been the truth. Right. And I don't know if we'll ever I, this October. I don't know if you know this, but this October is the official release date of all of the confidential CIA documents. Now, is it going to be redacted or are they going to extend it? I don't know if they're going to break the law and, and keep it sealed. I don't know. But this October is a pretty exciting time for all of those JFK people right. out there. He certainly had uh, – there There were so many things going on. He was such a controversial, polarizing president, and he had issues going in all different directions. So I, I just know that what we have been told, the official story is not the real one. So I'll just say that in a general context. I don't you know, want to disappoint anybody. We, but. Had, we had Judith Very Baker on our show, and right. she was the lover of, of Lee Harvey Oswald. And right, right. I don't mean as in a fan of him. She actually was the lover of Lee Harvey Oswald. She came into studio with us. She was kind of doing this covertly and came in to visit with us. And uh, we did the show. And, Tim, that still goes down as one of the more powerful episodes yeah. of Darkness Radio. And, yep. you know, I'm fascinated. I was born on November 22nd, about uh, four years after the Kennedy assassination. So, unfortunately, I've always got that that uh, nasty flavor in my mouth. I can never enjoy the birthday without being reminded of, of what happened in, in America's past. Uh, but to sit in front of this woman, Jimmy, and watch her tell these stories, and Tim was just pulling every heartstring during the breaks, she'd be telling us stories, and then Tim would come back and play some song that um, matched the time era or something that she had just mentioned, and she would right. just start bawling because it reminded right. her of, of him. So you could see there wasn't this facade, this BS that was going on, and she really painted a completely different human version of lee harvey oswald and it was really bizarre and i you know one of the weirdest things that happened to me after that episode was i you know i I, listen i love art bell i was a fan of art bell i i loved what the guy did and i always thank him for for opening this door that we all enjoy with coast to coast am and you know you'd hear the stories about him you know maybe being bothered by black ops or wiretaps and i always thought that was just great promo gig for the show but after we did the judith very baker episode my lines were tapped for about six months (laughs) yeah. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? Is this I would I, you'd hear the beeping from occasional. You could hear the clicking, right. the voices. And at first I thought, oh, maybe this I'm just getting a bad line. But it was happening on both my home phone and my cell phone. And right. uh, I talked to a couple of guys uh, that I know that are in the field uh, and they said, oh, no, no. Yeah, you're definitely being tapped. That's some of the the cue lines that they're doing. But uh, just 
you know, don't don't use any keywords that'll set them off, and you should be fine. But uh, that to me was one of the most unsettling experiences. That really, all these years later, fifty years, fifty four years later, the the government's still willing to tap some little moron out of Minneapolis's ra- uh, uh, phones to hear what we might know, and if we're continuing our conversation with Judith Very Baker off the air. Yeah, when I used to do sports radio, I never had, and I'm serious. I never had one technical glitch mm-hmm. ever. Right. Nothing, 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 nothing. Years of just uh, bliss. I start doing this and start talking about conspiracies and the NSA and the CIA and every, And I have technical issues. The first time it happened, I got really upset because I wasn't used to it. Right. I even probably dropped an F bomb on the air. Um, and and. Now it's just it's so status quo. It's just, you know, you just got to go with it. And and are they listening? Sure. I, I'm on your show right now, Dave. We've got an audience of probably 50 <laughs> that are just going, yeah, OK, let's see what these guys are going to talk about today. It's just it's just part of it. It's just part of it. I wanted to move on really quick. Sure. Off of JFK to one of my favorite conspiracies, which is the Apollo moon landings. Right. And I have I've I've had everybody uh, just like you. I've talked to everybody about this that is involved. And uh, the the point for me that is 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 most disturbing is yesterday, uh, just yesterday, I made the plunge. I switched from Apple or I switched from Android to Apple. Mm-hmm. OK, I got off my Android phones and Rita and I went out and got. Uh, the new uh, uh, seven plus uh, apples uh, iPhones. Now, as I hold this in my hand, I know what this is. Right? It's a computer. It's a. Uh, it's unbelievable uh, what it can do. It's got I don't know how many gigabytes in. St- you know, it's just like a crazy piece of technology. One that we accept today as just being part of life. Right? Okay. Right. Now let's back up. To 1968, 1967, the technology that was involved then, and this is, I'm just talking about facts. Now, let's not talk about conspiracies. Let's just talk about facts. The, the technology that they had back then to get to the moon, the moon is in orbit. It is moving. The earth is moving. Uh, everything is, is and, and moving around the sun. And to get uh, us from here to there and actually make it and not miss it, right? <laughs> not miss it. <laughs> Continue on out of the solar system uh, is is daunting. That technology today, we we still don't go. With all of the technology that we have today, we don't go back. The question is why? Did we ever go there to begin with? Did we have the technology, the the spacesuits, the radiation, the Van Allen belt, the 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 protection of heat? You know what they had to do allegedly uh, with the uh, with the command module and uh, the capsule on the front. They had the the the, uh, the lunar lander in the back um, going. They had to rotate it. They'd heat up one side. And rotate it and then heat up the other side while the other side was cooling. And this constant, think about that for a second. It just doesn't make it with the, you know, with the protection from the radiation of micrometeorites of just this thin, thin metal on, on the space capsule uh, with, with no computers on board. Oh, well, they did, but not, nothing like what we have today. Like this iPhone. This iPhone has more computing power than all of Mission Control and the Saturn V rocket put together. Think of it. Just it just it just doesn't make any sense. Are you saying that today we could get to the moon with only using the iPhone? Is that what you're trying to tell me today? Because this has more computing power than everything that you had put together. So that's that. That's the part for me where it's just a little bit hard to swallow because we know uh, we know about our technology today, and when you go back and look at history and think about how they put that all together. I have questions. Now, why would they do it? That's the thing. How could they keep it under wraps and why would they do it? Well, we were under uh, a space race with the Soviet Union. And all we wanted to do was get to the moon before them. 
and 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 embarrass them and bring down communism and 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 give them a black eye. That was the stated goal. And fake it, fake the moon landings, just fake it and 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 shut the Russians up. And could that be enough? Yes. Could everybody have been faked? Yes, absolutely. Were the rockets real? Certainly. Get it up there in orbit. After that, nobody knows anything. Nobody knows. We know that the, it, it took off and we know that it came back and landed in the ocean with some parachutes. We know that. So maybe they came and went, OK, all right. And, uh, you know, when somebody says, oh, well, you know, but they had 100,000 people working on that project. They had two. And how could have? they they thought that they, we were really going to the moon? There's nothing to hide there. There's only a few people that wouldn't have known, and you keep that secret. The Manhattan Project, we kept that under wraps pretty well uh, with 250,000 people employed. We kept that under wraps. It's possible to keep something an immense secret. And when it comes to that and the competition that we have between us and the Soviet Union, it makes that conspiracy pretty viable. And the fact that we haven't been back and now when we when we hear NASA today talk about the complexities of radiation in space and why going to Mars is so difficult and why going back to the moon is so difficult and, and we need to combat this. Well, we did it once, didn't we? You said that we did. What's the big deal? I don't see Buzz Aldrin with cancer today. You know, what either we did or we didn't. And why haven't we been back? So do you no, think no. then looking at, at OK, perfect tie in with that is the UFO conspiracy. Now, uh -huh. there's audio that has existed of uh, astronauts uh, going on open channels and saying, hey, you know, we've we've got a friend, we've got a visitor. And, right. and they're talking about this. Do you believe that that was disinformation to get people following a red herring instead of worrying about are we doing a moonshot? Now they're concerned with are we alone in space? Right, right. I definitely, I definitely believe that uh, we are being visited and they were seeing something. I, 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 I do believe that. I don't. I'm not saying it's possible. I'm saying I believe that. I believe it. I believe it wholeheartedly. I don't know about you, Dave, but um, uh, I have seen things that mm -hmm. I can't explain, and that those few events. Uh, happened when I was alone, right? Uh, me and my wife or whatever. And then, you know, I've got a couple of photographs, no big deal. But we had uh, a very famous, now that is infamous, this famous uh, mass sighting out of contact in the desert last year. And what was really funny about that mass sighting was a week later, it happened on a Saturday night. It was George's birthday, by the way. We had this big, elaborate birthday party and uh, on Saturday night. And the mass sighting happened uh, right after that. And there was, a, a, there was a few hundred people that were around me on this cliff uh, with night vision and hooping and hollering and when this went down. But also behind us were a couple of thousand people at the campsite and, and, and so forth, videotaping. Everybody saw this. But the funny thing was, a week later, that was on Saturday, on Friday night, I'm hosting Coast, right? I'm filling in for George. And I spoke to Lisa. And she goes, okay, so what do you want to do this Friday? Who's your guest? I said, me. She goes, what do you mean? I said, I, I'm going to go solo. Why? And I told her what happened. She, she, she said, go for it. And I, I said, I just want to tell the story. So I went on coast and I didn't care anymore, Dave, which goes back to the point about astronauts or mass sightings or the UFO conspiracy and so forth. I decided to go public and tell the world about what I saw because nobody what what crazy opportunity is this it's like you know wolf blitzer or somebody else going live saying okay last night I saw a UFO and this is what I saw and I'm choosing to do this now on a network and and I decided to do that why because what I saw was so extraordinary, um, and I had witnesses to back it up for everybody that was there. I wanted to do it for them. I wanted to do it for the UFO community, and it was uh, something that was not in dispute. The Canadian Broadcast Corporation, CBC, was there with uh, uh, a documentary film crew that was doing a documentary on contact in the desert. We've got three or four. We've got a full video crew. Right. 
there videotaping and as I'm talking about as this thing takes off. Now, what it was was this. It was a green chrome ball. It was about a, a mile and a half, two miles away. I'm guessing it was probably 100 feet in diameter, maybe bigger. But it was uh, next to this mountain skimming across the desert floor and moving from my left to right. And this green chrome ball that I'm looking at with binoculars and night vision uh, takes off, skims across the desert floor, and over a five-minute period, this ball from the desert floor takes off and goes up, 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 up into the sky, into the atmosphere where it becomes a pinprick, looks like a star, stops five minutes later in front of everybody, and then sits there and then turns left, right-hand angle, turns left, and disappears into the stars. Now, you tell me what I just saw. Somebody explain to me what I just saw. If that is our technology, if that is us, and that's our Air Force or whatever, and that that's technology you and I know nothing about and they're not disclosing to us, or it is them, it's E.T., I don't know, but it didn't have wings. It didn't have sparks. It didn't have smoke. It didn't have lights. It didn't have sound. It was just a green chrome ball like a Christmas ornament. Now, that's it. I saw it, and I have witnesses by the thousands behind me, and I'm going public with it. So when it comes to the uh, uh, astronauts seeing things in space, I know what I just saw. And I'm not the the way that I've just described it to you is exact. I didn't see little windows with aliens waving out. No, I didn't see that. I didn't see it materialize. I didn't see it do anything crazy. No, I watched it launch from our Earth right in front of us. And then over five minutes, just going thousands of miles an hour and eventually stop and and become a star sitting out there in space and then made a left-hand turn and disappeared. And that's it. That's the end of the story for me. I don't need to have somebody uh, go, well, you know, man, you saw. No, you were not there. I saw what I saw, and I need somebody to explain this to me. I can't say what it was. I don't know. I can only tell you what I saw. So when I hear an astronaut say something like this over live comms, I see uh, a videotape. I hear uh, different uh, things about night vision and things that people are seeing. I know now that th- they're not BSing. They've seen what I've just seen, and I can't explain it. I can't. I can't. And I'm, I'm, I will always, always tell this story. Um, and uh, if, if it wasn't for all of the witnesses, if I was there alone on that cliff, then I'm just another guy. I'm another guy that calls into coast to coast with a story, right? But that's not the case here. There were thousands of witnesses, and we had uh, so much videotape that is out there now on the web of this sighting. And uh, and you can hear my voice. Uh, I'm on a PA system. Uh, They were out there doing this. uh, You you can hear what I – as I described it. And uh, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. So there you go. Is that a conspiracy? The conspiracy is – Washington knows something, the world knows something, uh, governments know something, but they are not being honest with us. I know what I've seen, and that's the end of the story. One day, one day, we'll, we'll find out what they really know. How, do you know how close you are where you witness this to a major um, military installation? Yeah, 19 miles away. Isn't it fascinating that so many of these are seen so close to a military facility. I saw an uh, astounding UFO in Trout Lake, Washington. And uh, during my visit there, James Gilliland said, oh, yeah, there's a military installation, you know, 50 miles off that way. Right. And it seems like these these unbelievable moments are very close to military. If, if that's the case, you know, it seems like the, the aliens are pretty ballsy. If this is truly an alien or interdimensional species, because they're popping up somewhere where it would take no time to scramble to knock them right. down or intercept them. 
Right, right. That was always the big question for me. Uh, The next night, uh, 29 Palms, one of the biggest marine uh, installations in the world, is right there. It's 19 miles away, Mm -hmm. uh, 29 Palms. And the next night after this mass sighting, uh, I'm having a little get-together with the the fader knots at the fader compound. And uh, Richard Dolan and Mike Barra, uh, I invite them over. And the three of us are sitting there. And Dolan turns to me and says, oh, man, I heard about the mass sighting last night. I'm jealous. And Barra, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Skeptic, uh, who I love, he says, Jimmy, man, 29 Palms is right there. You can't. You, are you telling me that, that that there couldn't have been something else going on? Why didn't they scramble? Maybe it was some aircraft being. Te- I said, Mike, you didn't see what I saw. So stop right there. Now, trip on this, Dave. 30 minutes later, it's and it's now dusk. It's dark. 30 <laughs> minutes later. We get the night vision gear out, and we step out uh, and start looking to the sky. It's myself. To my right is Dolan. To the right of Dolan is Barra. And right on cue, on cue, <laughs> we had we had 50 other people there uh, to, to, to enjoy this moment. On cue, this little ball right in front of us just lights up in the sky and takes off. And I and Dolan goes, what is that? And I grab the night vision and I'm looking and it's just a white ball. I don't know how big around, but it's taking off and it's going from left to right and it's moving. It's booking, but it lit up in the sky. It was like weird. Dolan grabs a night vision. He's never seen anything like this. And he is swearing like a sailor. You've never heard Richard Dolan use nouns and verbs like what was coming out of his (laughs) mouth. Mike Barra. Uh, then grabs the night vision from Dolan. Barra, the skeptic, was swearing like a sailor. And he was like, I can't, I can't believe I'm seeing this right now. I can't believe it. It doesn't have wings. It doesn't have lights. It's just, you know, and, and there you go. You know, and so that's how you turn somebody around. You know, that's, you need to have that kind of sighting where um, you and I, Dave, Tim, we, we grew up in an era where, as kids, as boys, we were fascinated with airplanes and rockets and astronauts, and we could name every plane and every type of plane and, and things. And, you know, that's what we were into. So we know what we're seeing in the sky. You can identify it. It's fun to do. Oh, that's an F-16. That's an F-15. That's a, that's a, 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 a Boeing 707. That's, you, know, you can name you know, types of helicopter. But when you see something like that that you can't explain, then the questions start to arise. And to have Barra go through that after 30 minutes prior, he was poo-pooing everything. You know, there's 29 palms is right there. You know, and that's and which also. Which was a it was a satisfying moment for me for sure uh, to see that happen. But this is the other point: we're 19 miles away from 29 Palms, and that mass sighting the night before on Saturday, nothing was scrambled. There were no helicopters. There was no uh, you know uh, F-16s, F-15s, F-22, whatever. There were no planes zipping around. There was no investigation. So what does that tell you? Either. They don't care. They're used to it, right? Maybe it's Joshua Tree and this kind of phenomenon goes on, and they're not going to take the time to scramble. Or they don't have the time to scramble because they know that these things will be gone by the time that they get there, and they don't want to waste their time. Or they know, and they are condoning what's going on. They are in contact. Maybe this is something else that is going on. I, I don't have those answers, but I can say this from the cliff that we were on. You could practically see 29 Palms. It's a major installation, and these lights in the sky are flying right there, right there, 19 miles away. Very, very public, very public, no scrambling of anything. It was fascinating to witness. Yeah. Have you ever been out to the Assetti Ranch, James Gilliland's place in, in uh, Trout Lake? Uh, we're going to be up there this July 4th. We're going to be up there this July 4th. I'll be speaking up there. It'll be our first trip. Um, very excited about this. Uh, f- through everything that we have seen lately with with night vision and going up there to finally see what is going on, um, it's, a, it's a bucket list moment. So, yeah, we'll be up there July 4th. I've, I've been there three or four times and have been blown away every time I've been there. Um, 
Yeah, we, I did an episode of Paranormal State on A and E where I took the kids out instead of demon hunting. We went out looking for UFOs, and uh, we caught just stupid things happening on camera. I mean, it was unbelievable. Uh, but I, it is one of the more uh, unreal, surreal locations I've ever been to. And James is a, a very interesting guy. You know, like I said, he kind of uh, Grizzly Adams looking hippie, you know, very <laughs> docile and calm about everything. And, you know, I just right. saw one of the most uh, amazing things in the sky that I can't even begin to wrap my head around. And he was just like, oh, yeah, man, that's just one of their half biologic, half uh, mechanical craft. It's how it gets between dimensions. It's living and mechanical. Well, see- and I was like, like, what the hell are you talking about? I saw it, and I don't even understand what you're getting at. Right. Yeah. Dave, let me, ju- let me jump in right there. Yeah. The trippy thing is once you go through what you went through, right, right and you see things in night vision and you see what's going on, now walk- when you're walking around your house, now you're in Minnesota, and you're thinking it now, it's always in the back of your mind. Mm-hmm. Right now above me is some crazy stuff going on. Right. Right, right now, right now, if you had night vision, wherever you're at in Minnesota, any state in the union, no matter where you are, look up. You don't see anything moving around? Well, there is, and there's a lot of it. And if you had the op- ever have the opportunity to get night vision and just look up to the sky and see, then that you're, it's, it's, such a li- it's an epiphany. It's such a life-changing moment because there is stuff going on up there. You just can't see it. And now I'm I'm always tripping, man. I'm always tripping. I'm always looking up just to see if I'm going to see some crazy sighting like I did over at Joshua Tree. Right. It's, it's pretty nutty once you see it for the first time. Yeah, you do. Once you see something, you develop what I call Pez neck. Right. Your head's always on that tilt like a Pez yep. dispenser. Uh, you yep. can't help but wanting to look and see something. But with that said, now one thing that Tim has talked about a lot on the show is his belief that these are craft that we've created. Whether it's right. from alien technology or not, you know, even we were talking uh, earlier this week uh, with Dr. Lin Kitai about the 20th anniversary of the Phoenix Lights. And right. some of the, the aspects of it to me were intriguing. Uh, some it, it sounds like, you know, you're, you're seeing something like this over a very populated area. And why would the government do this? Why would they, well, wouldn't it make sense that if you want to test this protocol to see how people are going to respond, is there mass panic in the streets? We can do it in a, in a generalized way where we can shut it down and then dismiss it as, um, you know, sparklers, flares, sunspots, whatever we want to call it. Uh, but, but do these kind of experiments over large areas? Um, you know, you've got the, the famous sightings of that large football field size UFO over Illinois that traversed, mm-hmm. I think, four or five different jurisdictions and police are following it, talking. It's like a 10 story tall building and as long right. as a football field or two. That's massive, Jimmy. How the hell can something like that be suspended in the air and the entire world's not familiar with it? It's sh- something shut down O'Hara Field. Uh, China, was it China, Tim, that got shut down a couple times? I thought yep. it was, yeah. Yeah, it was China's airfield yep. got shut down twice. China's not a military you want to screw with either. So Yeah, the the point with all of those sightings are, well, you can kind of look at it two ways. Mm-hmm. One, the there is no question that what we're exposed to as far as technology goes is is what they want us to know about right if, if we you and i had the ability to go out into the mojave desert to go to skunk works or go to area 51 and walk through those hangars and see what they're working on now uh and you know you hear that the famous adage you know well okay this is 20 years into the future this is the technology today you'll see this in 20 years or 30 years all right Think about that. I mean, they, there is stuff going on that we don't have a clue. We, it would just blow our minds. Mm-hmm. The best example, when we're talking about flying triangles and flying things, the B-2 stealth bomber, we are very acclimated to today. If we saw it up in the sky, we might trip a little bit, but um, we're used to the image of it. The technology behind that, yes, it's invisible to radar, but that's not what I'm talking about. There is an anti-gravity, anti-gravity technology with this B-2 that you can go and read about today. It's been disclosed now uh, and is public now, but it, it, that it has uh, an electrostatic charge on the wings to give it lift. 
think about this for a second. Electromagnetic, electrostatic charging that is going on with the wings to allow that thing to take off, to fly. Now, stop and think about that for a second. Where, where is that coming from? Where is it that that is some crazy, crazy idea, but it's real. That thing can fly so slow, so laden with bombs, so heavy and silent because it's not using up any energy. It's like I said, it's almost a a real anti-gravity situation. Where did that technology come from? I don't know. You know, I don't. The Soviets aren't using it. The Chinese aren't using it. Nobody else has got anything like the B-2 bomber. Only we do. And look at the thing. It looks as alien as anything that we've ever seen, doesn't it? It's straight out of Independence Day, but it's real. So if you take that idea right there and park that above a larger version of it over Phoenix, like Tim says, it could be our technology, uh, the ability to uh, skin craft today or skin tanks or, or things to make it look like things in the background and 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 have that uh, cloaking technology quite possible, quite possible. And was it tested over Phoenix? Absolutely quite possible. That's one side of it. All right, that's the Tim side, and I, I, I tend to agree with that. The flip side of that is if E.T. is coming here with a craft that large, um, the technology that is there, it's millions of years ahead of us. Million, not a thousand, not a hundred years. It's millions of years advanced. And that kind of stuff is just going to appear. It's just going to appear. It's not going to fly in. It's just going to vaporize. It's just going to show up, and it's going to disappear. And it could be invisible. It could be translucent. It could be anything. We don't have any idea what that technology is because we wouldn't understand it. And that's, that's, so that's the ET side. Uh, you know, could it be something in the middle? I, you know, I really, really don't know. I do know that with these kinds of sightings that are going on nearly daily today, that uh, there's something going on and we just don't know what it is. Does Washington know? I, I do believe that they do. Yes. All right. Uh, we've got a couple other uh, kind of conspiracies I want to uh, dabble with as well. You know, what's one that was brought to our attention. And again, sometimes when you do this and you, you're not fo- focusing on the news all the time and watching it, you miss the pieces of puzzles that seem to be falling around you all the time. This sure. Uh, these deaths of holistic doctors. Uh, I mean, it's insane, Jimmy, right? You've got murder, suicide, and natural causes, but they're happening in massive numbers to these leaders in holistic medicine. What do you make of this? Is this, again, us just trying to force a conspiracy to be real? Or do you think there's something really nefarious? Is big, big pharma really murdering doctors that are trying to show a different way? Right. Okay. So it's which definition of conspiracy are we dealing right. with here? Are we dealing with the definition of conspiracy to two or more people conspiring to commit a crime, right? In this case, murder. Or is it the conspiracy of uh, it, it just can't be true and this is a, you know, this is a big fake situation and, and it, you know, that definition of conspiracy. Let's back up here. The one thing that leads credence to this, where it is nearly solid, is the money that is behind Big Pharma is money that you and I don't have any idea about. It's it's money uh, on not only a global scale, but uh, this is what countries have fallen and gone to war over kind of money. This is a, a big, big situation. Now, if you have holistic doctors that are coming in and saying, look, <laughs> whatever it is, right, whatever it is, you can cure cancer by drinking cherry Kool-Aid, right? <laughs> right? right. Now, now, let's stop and think about the implications of that. Uh, is Big Pharma going to, uh, and I'm talking about a real cure for cancer, if you use wooden toothpicks instead of plastic toothpicks, you can now cure cancer. Something, you know, you know, as simple as that. Is Big Pharma going to stand in the way of that? Of course, they are not. They are not. There are dark boardrooms, 
dark, sinister places where guys and gals are sitting around these boardroom tables discussing ways to make more money from big pharma, not making less money. Right, but to to the ends of let's start murdering holistic doctors. I mean, it's happening in such amazing numbers. No question. How do we not? How do people not notice it? And then start pointing the finger at at, at big pharma. Yep, 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 yep. And when you and and when and not only that, uh, not only with the the holistic doctors, but it's also the bankers around the world too, as well, that are now understanding the financial system and they they now have inside knowledge about what is going on and these bankers are suddenly falling off of buildings or crashing in cars the same thing with the holistic doctors suddenly everybody's having heart attacks or they crash or they you know they 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 trip and fall in their house right it's it's happening so much that it's very easy very easy uh to solve any of this just chase the money just, you know, how many times have you heard that, right? How many times has, has your mom said or your dad or your aunt or uncle or, you know, just chase the money? Well, sometimes the most simplest answer is the correct one. And when it comes to big pharma um, and uh, the, the question of autism today or, or cancer cures or uh, the, the common cold, all of this stuff is, is answered with big money. There are probably very simple answers to a lot of people's problems. You know, and one of them, one of them, check this out, Dave, Tim. You, uh, let me let me say this. You know how you stay healthy? I'll give you the Jimmy Church School of Wisdom right now, and you're going to graduate in 10 seconds. Okay. Do you know how you stay healthy? Hit Don't me. go to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Don't go to the doctor. Right. Well, I Don't. Learned. I learned that by watching TV, because every time you watch a TV show and the guy goes to the doctor, he has cancer, he's dead 10 minutes later on the episode. That's right. That's so right. as long That's as you right. don't acknowledge you've got it, you don't have it. That's right. <laughs> you know, now, you, you get in a car accident, you break your arm, go to the doctor. That's, that's when you need a doctor. But if, you, if anything else beyond, you know, something that you need sutures on, right, you need a bone set, um, don't go. Don't listen to the commercials. Don't watch the commercials. How many times, you know, they give why they do prescription medicine commercials is beyond me. That should only be seen by doctors. But they show that to the world by billions to billions of people. And are you tired? Yeah, I'm tired. Are you having problems sleeping? Yes. Okay. Well, take this. And and wait a minute. Everybody's tired. Right. Everybody has got itchy skin. Everybody has headaches. But yet they they offer these 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 solutions on the air. They turn around and go to the doctor and say, I saw this medicine and I'm having the what what is the what is going on? And then you listen to the the bylines underneath that. This is why the holistic doctors are so uh, important to get out of the way. You listen to all of the disclaimers at the end. You know, may cause suicidal thoughts. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing <laughs> advertising this on television? Right? May cause, you know, may cause you to kill your puppies. <laughs> you know, right. It's like, I don't understand it. So, yes, the holistic doctor situation is a real one. And, and there is just no way that they will allow holistic doctors to get in the way of making billions of dollars. And it, that's uh, it, are are holistic doctors expendable? Those those dark boardrooms that I'm talking about, and they have the plus or minus columns as they're going down the check marks. The easiest solution for them is to eliminate. Absolutely, absolutely. But I, couldn't I, it I be said on the that. other side, Jimmy? Maybe that the holistic doctors are. Uh, doing it their way, and it's truly not a healthier lifestyle. What they're doing is is hurting themselves or poisoning themselves, and the reason their life expectancy is so bad is because it's affecting their depression, it's affecting their health, causing more heart attacks, causing suicide, causing suspicious-looking deaths, but it's because of uh, alternative methods to taking care of medical conditions. Right, right. And it sound, see, you, know, you, you sound like you work for Big Pharma. <laughs> and, 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 and no, I just that. think that's another aspect of of, no, of where the conspiracies it, go. What I'm saying is that is their answer, right? Right. Now, if I heard that, if I was a judge, I'd be just like, "Get out of here! Get out of here with that! Don't don't even bring that into my courtroom." 
I, I, I just don't want to hear it. And, it, you know, that kind of politic, political speak, political speak uh, doesn't fly. But that would be the answer from Big Pharma, certainly. And, and it just doesn't work. All right. Let's talk about a topic uh, that uh, is very polarizing. And there is a, a dark line on this one. I'll, I'll stand back on it. But I, talking about things like uh, the Boston Marathon, Sandy Hook right. and Aurora, uh, right. Colorado shooting. Um, these truther groups that have come forth saying that these uh, these things did not happen and that the there was nobody murdered, there was nobody killed, this was an experiment to try to take away our weapons and to control us um, and and con- you know run us with fear. Mm-hmm. What what are your thoughts on things like that? I mean, saying Boston Marathon bombing did not happen, Sandy Hook did not happen. All those children are not dead. That was a fake. Uh, scenario and uh, Aurora, Colorado uh, shooting was again nothing real. It was all a mock up. It was a, a, a trial. What do you think of conspiracies on that angle? Uh, the the gun control aspect gets pulled off of the table every single time because it didn't work. Right. Okay. So it it obviously didn't work. So that takes that argument away. They want to take our guns away. This is the next step to, you know, some legislation and they're going to take our guns away. We need to fight. Well, it obviously hasn't worked. It didn't work once, twice, three times, four times. And there there's that aspect. The other part of me, Dave, that I have big issues with is um, until it is proven that one of those children didn't die in Sandy Hook, right? Mm-hmm. Until it is proven, then I am not going to be, because I'm a parent, I'm not going to uh, play with a parent whose child is dead and mess with their emotions to claim that their child isn't really dead. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to play part of that. I'm not going to do that. But, Jimmy, that's it's, because they're actors. They didn't have children. Right, this is a right, fake right. story. Right. Right. Right, right. The whole story is fake until something is proven. Right. So and I'm talking about the conspiracy side of it. Um, I I would love to find the government guilty of something like this so we could all stand up and go, see, OK, here we go. But until then, until we have some, there is no con- everything is circumstantial. Uh, when it comes to Sandy Hook and Aurora, I have done what everybody has done on this, certainly, and that is a responsible journalist. I've investigated everything. I've listened to all of the police tapes. I've watched all the evidence. I've seen everything on the right conspiracy side things, the darkest part of this evidence. But it's nothing but circumstantial. It's nothing but hearsay. On, on the real side of it is is these children have died. You know, and until anything is proven otherwise, I'm talking about real proof. One of these kids that is supposed to be buried in the ground somewhere with the death certificate has shown up alive living in Costa Rica. Right now, you show me that. Then we've got uh, we've got a big problem with Washington. Right. And, and, and there will be a big uproar. But until then, if, if my child died there and I was listening to this. I, I would be devastated as a parent. I would be devastated, devastated. Right. And I just want to be part of that. I, I don't. I, I There's too much on one side of me that as a human being, I, I, I can't go there. But if, if, if evidence pops up, I'll be the first guy to talk about it. See, I I'm really always, will. I'm fascinated by the truth or movement in that sense that they, they hinge their evidence on these um crisis actors and they'll take a photograph from aurora of a dark-haired girl crying on a cell phone and they'll post it up against a picture of a girl at sandy hook uh with dark hair crying on a cell phone and it's the same actress obviously uh, when right. to me i just see a dark-haired girl crying on a cell phone because a massive tragedy just took place and yes there is a a, a likeness in the fact they're both dark-haired girls crying on a cell phone but to these right. truthers it is frightening to me to what extent when i've talked about it openly i know people on the ground at sandy hook um some of the first responders and their it, it, it's their lives are forever shattered because of what they saw and the bodies they had to step over to deal with that i have uh friends that i knew for many years in aurora colorado who uh contacted me after the attack they worked at the theater they knew people that had been murdered 
and it wasn't a, a, a false flag ceremony. It, it took place. This is a real, you know, item. And I've mentioned that, and I have gotten death threats for saying that on air, for yeah, saying that I, I know this too. to be true. And they're like, "You're full of shit. You don't know anything, Schrader, and you weren't there." And but yet, the the armchair quarterbacks weren't there on the site either. They just know it because they read a couple of websites that filled their paranoid delusions. And that, to me, right. is the most one of the most terrifying aspects of of this whole conspiracy world and watching how people have become disassociated because of things like the internet, as we talked about the great antichrist, right? Um, they, they follow these belief systems and these patterns and they're so disassociated from humankind now. And they're so, uh, blanched in, in reading everything and following everything on a, a, a piece of electronic equipment. And that's where they get their information from instead of knowing or, or doing any kind of legwork. And I'll tell you what, you put your feet on the ground, you go to these towns and you meet and you look in the eyes of these employees and you tell me that after you meet with them, that this was a scam. Don't sit at home. Don't, right. don't tell right. me that, you know, living in Florida, what happened in, in Aurora, Colorado. The one of the one of the downfalls of technology is uh, too much technology. And with that, for us today is Photoshop. Right. Photoshop is so damn good. It is unbelievable. And anybody with not even professional skills, rudimentary, just somebody with the basic levels of skills in Photoshop in a couple of days can start cranking out some stuff that that are really, really, really scary and believable. And so when you see these Photoshopped images of the girl talking on the phone, uh, crying on the phone and, and, and appearing in these different images, look. It's, it's just stop. People believe that because it is real to them. Their eyes can't discern what is fake and what is not. Somebody posted. Um, it was brilliant. The girl screaming on the phone that we're talking about, the crisis actor mm -hmm. in the studio with me at Coast to Coast. Right. <laughs> right. She's right there. Right. And look at that. And that is it's just like, wow, man, this girl gets around. She's even in the Coast to Coast studio. And you would not know the difference. Because the image itself is real. It, it doesn't mean that the photograph was taken in the studio with her standing next to me. I'm saying that the image itself to the eyes is real. And that is one of the downfalls here. You can manipulate anything. You can manipulate anything and 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 get your message across and really freak people out. They don't take the time to question. The um, I'll give some advice to anybody right now that is listening. I'm going to give you the best advice. When you see an image on the Internet now today, most people don't know about this, Dave. And maybe you don't, Tim. Maybe you don't. But when you see an image... Right click on it. That's all you got to do. Mm -hmm. Right click. At the bottom, it pops up and it says search for image on Google. That's all you got to do. So you right click on the image, search for the image on Google. It'll pop up and you will see that image. Maybe not if it's real. You'll see the single point source where it came from, the progenitor. Or you're going to see it all over the Internet. And you're going to find out how long it's been on the Internet. Somebody says that this picture was taken yesterday and you find out that it was posted in, in 2011. Right. Oh, really? Now, I'll give you an example. and I'm sure we're running out of time, so I'll close with this. Um, when we're talking about hoaxes and conspiracies, about uh, two years ago, I get a set of photographs sent to me via email off of a cell phone of a triangle beautiful triangle flying in the sky over uh, this small town in New York. And I get like four photographs and incredible. I'm talking about the, 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 the images that will now crack the case photographs. And I was so impressed. I could not believe what I was looking at. And I get the whole story. It was done by a chef. He was on his way to work. It was 8 o'clock in the morning. He pulled over on the side of the road. There was three or four witnesses there. Everybody stopped and took photographs. These were taken yesterday. He's a buddy of mine. He owns this restaurant. And he showed them to me. And Jimmy, you know, you're the guy. And and I listened to Fade to Black. So here it is. And, and I said, look, can I talk to the chef? Yes, I'm talking to him now. I'm, I'm exchanging emails, going back and forth. And I'm blown away. So you know what I do? 
I turn around and I contact John Greenwald over at the Black Vault. Mm -hmm. And I send the pictures to him. And I said, John, I think we got the breaking story. I want you to help me break it. Let's do this together. Um, uh, Give me a couple of hours here. I'm going to talk to this chef. Here's the story. Here's the photographs. This is what I have right now. Boom. John immediately, which he never does, right, writes me back. Holy crap. Are you kidding me? This is the most. I'm like, dude, I know. Exactly. Hold on. I'm waiting. I got to get a statement from the chef. And I want the original original files off the cell phone that are timestamped. Okay, hang on. And so now I'm going back and forth with the guys. And uh, in New York, okay, the chef is, you know, he may come on the show tonight. He may not. He's got to work. But, you know, I go and I right click on the pictures and I search Google. It turned out that these pictures were posted online in 2007 with a story from uh, that back then was, oh, we were at Walmart, we're walking outside, we looked up, we saw this, we had friends, it was done in whatever, to Greenville, South Carolina, Walmart, something. And, uh, and it was 2007. And then I found about 30 other websites in 2007, 2008 that had posted these same photographs. And with different versions of the story, it was Walmart or it was Pizza Hut, right? <laughs> it was right. in front of my school. And uh, and there was enough time in between. Now, the guy that sent them to me, I don't know. He, you know, I don't know if he was trying to hoax me or if, you know, he told me that the guy emailed him or texted him the photographs directly off of his cell phone. Simple enough. But that's how a story gets created. And had I not just right clicked at up to that point, I had a chef in New York that that took pictures the day before the day before. And I'm looking at the the, the cell phone images. Greenwald never saw these before. He gets sucked in and it almost, you know, and how damaging is that to ufology and to fade to black and coast to coast and you. And it's a simple thing. Right click on the image. Find out if somebody says this was taken yesterday in Iraq or in Syria. Right click on the picture. Find out. That's all you got to do. And you can find out if it's 10 years old, five years old, two years old or 24 hours old. Tim, I I think you can use uh, tineye.com as well. Um, as a great resource where you can uh, pull the picture into tineye. They'll look at it and, and, they look at all these points of reference and they'll let you know if it's been on other websites or where you can find it and when it was launched too. So if you can't find it through Google, you have one more resource through tin com. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's excellent. Yeah. But it, it, it's such a quick thing now, right? You know, when I get an image, I don't even, I don't even read the email, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just right click and find out if we're on target, but it's just a simple, easy, quick. It's just a quick and dirty first stage of vetting. Sure. You know, just, just right there, just right click and go there. So we've got just a few minutes left. Let me ask you this, Jimmy, uh, in the world of disclosure, 50th anniversary or what? 55th anniversary or so of, uh, um, the Kennedy assassination this October, they're supposed to release that information, UFO disclosure, things like that. Do you think we're ever going to see, uh, one concise answer on any of these things, these topics that will, uh, sate people's interest and fascination? No, we will not. And there's, uh, there's a lot of reasons why. First off, the the disclosure for me doesn't need to happen or me or other people like myself that have seen something as crazy as I have seen. So I know that there's something going on. I don't need the government to disclose. But the reason why they won't is because now they are, they're opening themselves up to lawsuits uh, from the energy side of things or f- f- multitudes of lies that they have to answer to over the years. Um, that would complicate things worldwide. It, so, no, disclosure like that, it just it, it won't because of the logistics that are involved with that. Having to admit to a, a 50, 60, 70 year lie out of Roswell, if we go back to 1947, 70 years ago this year, um, they, they just couldn't do it. They could not. So that's 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 my take. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, the Kennedy assassination um, and, and other examples of this. But. Once you get wrapped up into it and you've stuck with the story for so long, 
then you, you that's the story you have to stick with and and i just don't think uh answering to a lie or lies uh publicly is something that's going to happen the disclosure um will happen accidentally will it happen from the government stepping up you know will trump step up to a podium and go okay ufos are here no that will not i think it's going to happen accidentally not a flying saucer on the White House lawn. If I hear that one more time, I'll shoot myself in the head. That's not that's not how it's going to happen. It's going to happen through probably a document dump, something uh, radical uh, and accidental, uh, WikiLeaks or otherwise, where um, uh, the evidence is going to pop out, a whole slew of government videotapes and a whole slew of things that – that um, all point to all of this and answer all of the questions. That's how I think it's going to happen today. It's going to happen electronically, and uh, and it, it'll be quick, and it'll be sudden. And then we'll have a, a disclosure. Jimmy Church, thank you so much for spending uh, your evening with us and hanging out here today. We uh, we appreciate your uh, your chat. How can people hear you? When can they hear you? Give them the information. All very simple, jimmychurchradio.com. Um, everything is there. You can follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio and Facebook. Uh, we keep everything updated every single day. We are live 7 to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Uh, live, that specific time. Uh, everything is free. Just go click and listen and enjoy yourselves. Um, and then, of course, over on the weekends, uh, I'm over at Coast when Dave isn't hogging up all of the airtime. Um, and and uh, now I do have... <laughs> I do have a new show that's coming out on History Channel, and uh, it's untitled at the moment. It was titled. It's being retitled, so I don't have the name of it, but it is dealing specifically with conspiracies where we have gone around the country um, and got things on film, and and we have pushed things as far as we can push it, certainly with network television. It's centered around Fade to Black and the conspiracy blanket that is underneath that. So we cover just about everything from the NSA to the CIA to uh, UFOs, and I think we even have a, a Bigfoot episode that is uh, pretty exciting, too, as well. So, And that'll be uh, premiering uh, this fall. Well, let me, let me throw a, a title possibility in the hat for you. Uh, Darkness Dave's buddy, Jimmy Church, Explores Conspiracies. <laughs> I, I'll send that over to legal, It's worth Dave. a shot. I, I'll sign off on it. I don't have a problem well, with there, that. There, if we don't have to release any funds, I think I can push this through. <laughs> Jimmy, here we go. Just to kind of tie you into dave even further how about from darkness to black huh, huh? you know uh tim you haven't planted a flag there you didn't discover anything every time <laughs> every, every time you know dave after dave was on fade to black um the audience response to that of uh, the, your fans your audience uh coming over going dude man you and dave uh you guys you guys need to think about this how about darkness to black how about fade to darkness you guys need it was, it was nice it knowing was a, you tim jimmy church is going to offer yeah, you in the parking lot now yeah. the conspiracy has already begun i'm done you heard it here <laughs> folks if tim suddenly goes quote unquote missing we'll just check into jimmy church's camp first uh yeah, dave, yeah, Tim is not suicidal. <laughs> no. Let's, yeah, there you go. Hey, thank you, guys. Great conversation. All the best to you. Always a pleasure, Jimmy, and uh, good luck on the new TV series. Uh, tomorrow we're back. Fairies, pukas, and changelings, a complete guide to the wild and wicked enchanted realm. Varla Ventura will be our guest. And remember, I'll be hosting Coast to Coast AM this Saturday from midnight till 4 a.m. My guest in the first hour, Greg Lawson, a law enforcement official. He's going to talk about paranormal perceptions and and interpretations. Um, he is a researcher, and he's going to outline the many dynamics that can affect the memory of experience. So by identifying these undercurrents, experiencers can get a better understanding of their involvement in what they perceive to be paranormal. And then for the last three hours of the show, I'm going to be joined uh, by our True Crime Tuesday guest. You heard him earlier this week as we talked about the Cincinnati Psycho. Uh, this uh, Saturday, we're going to talk about um, a, a true crime with... Um, 
strange uh, twists and turns, the death of the Lindbergh baby. And uh, you guys are going to get a really interesting history of uh, Charles Lindbergh and the death and kidnapping of his son. Uh, maybe a new part of the story you've never been uh, alerted to before. So make sure you check that out. You can get uh, that live stream right here at knsiradio.com. It's our home for uh, Beyond the Darkness and for Coast to Coast AM. You can stream it live from their site. And uh, we want to thank our sponsors for the day. Audible, an Amazon company. Remember, they've got the brand new X-Files Audible exclusive coming soon. So go and get your 30-day free trial and a free downloaded Audible book at audibletrial.com forward slash darkness. That's audibletrial.com forward slash darkness to start your trial right now. And for our furry friends, let's thanks Get Bark Box because when you sign up, you're going to get them shipped to your door, a unique variety of toys and treats that you wouldn't find anywhere else, all edibles that have been made in the U.S. and Canada. So your dog's happiness and engagement will be absolutely th- off the charts, uh, and they'll replace any items that your dog doesn't like. Scout's honor. Really? That's the way they work it. And if you want an additional month, they've got one three, six, and 12-month subscriptions. Get an extra month just by going to getbarkbox.com forward slash darkness when you subscribe. And you get all that information and more if you check out darknessradio.com and click on our Killer Deals link to find all of our sponsors and information and what's going on. Again, I'll be hosting Coast to Coast on Saturday. Tonight, our buddy George Nori has the wonderful Linda Moulton Howe. Uh, pesticides, alien abductions, and Sasquatches on tap for this evening on the best in overnight talk radio. You've been listening to the best in paranormal talk radio. For Tim Dennis, I'm Dave Schrader. Special thanks to Jimmy Church. This is Beyond the Darkness.